29. The Evolution of the Spirit. November 10th. 15 Rue Greuze, Paris. Tonight, I will speak of the evolution or progress of the spirit. Absolute repose does not exist in nature. All things either make progress or lose ground. Everything moves forward or backward. Nothing is without motion. From his birth, a man progresses physically until he reaches maturity. Then, having arrived at the prime of his life, he begins to decline. The strength and powers of his body decrease, and he gradually arrives at the hour of death. Likewise, a plant progresses from the seed to maturity. Then, its life begins to lessen until it fades and dies. A bird soars to a certain height, and having reached the highest possible point in its flight, begins its descent to earth. Thus it is evident that movement is essential to all existence. All material things progress to a certain point, then begin to decline. This is the law which governs the whole physical creation. Now let us consider the soul. We have seen that movement is essential to existence. Nothing that has life is without motion. All creation, whether of the mineral, vegetable or animal kingdom, is compelled to obey the law of motion. It must either ascend or descend. But with the human soul, there is no decline. Its only movement is towards perfection. Growth and progress alone constitute the motion of the soul. Divine perfection is infinite, therefore the progress of the soul is also infinite. From the very birth of a human being, the soul progresses, the intellect grows and knowledge increases. When the body dies, the soul lives on. All the differing degrees of created physical beings are limited, but the soul is limitless. In all religions, the belief exists that the soul survives the death of the body. Intercessions are sent up for the beloved dead. Prayers are said for their progress and for the forgiveness of their sins. If the soul perished with the body, all this would have no meaning. Further, if it were not possible for the soul to advance towards perfection after it had been released from the body, of what avail are all these loving prayers of devotion? We read in the sacred writings that all good works are found again. Now, if the soul did not survive, this also would mean nothing. The very fact that our spiritual instinct, surely never given in vain, prompts us to pray for the welfare of those our loved ones who have passed out of the material world. Does it not bear witness to the continuance of their existence? In the world of spirit, there is no retrogression. The world of mortality is a world of contradictions, of opposites. Motion being compulsory, everything must either go forward or retreat. In the realm of spirit, there is no retreat possible. All movement is bound to be towards a perfect state. Progress is the expression of spirit in the world of matter. The intelligence of man, his reasoning powers, his knowledge, his scientific achievements, all these being manifestations of the spirit, partake of the inevitable law of spiritual progress and are therefore of necessity immortal. My hope for you is that you will progress in the world of spirit as well as in the world of matter, that your intelligence will develop, your knowledge will augment and your understanding be widened. You must ever press forward, never standing still. 
Avoid stagnation, the first step to a backward movement to decay. The whole physical creation is perishable. These material bodies are composed of atoms. When these atoms begin to separate, decomposition sets in, then comes what we call death. This composition of atoms, which constitutes the body or mortal element of any created being, is temporary. When the power of attraction which holds these atoms together is withdrawn, the body as such ceases to exist. With the soul, it is different. The soul is not a combination of elements. It is not composed of many atoms. It is of one indivisible substance, and therefore eternal. It is entirely out of the order of the physical creation. It is immortal. Scientific philosophy has demonstrated that a simple element, simple meaning not composed, is indestructible, eternal. The soul, not being a composition of elements, is in character as a simple element, and therefore cannot cease to exist. The soul being of that one indivisible substance can suffer neither disintegration nor destruction, therefore there is no reason for its coming to an end. All things living show signs of their existence, and it follows that these signs could not of themselves exist if that which they express or to which they testify had no being. A thing which does not exist can, of course, give no sign of its existence. The manifold signs of the existence of the Spirit are forever before us. The traces of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the influence of His divine teaching, is present with us today and is everlasting. A non-existent thing, it is agreed, cannot be seen by signs. In order to write, a man must exist. One who does not exist cannot write. Writing is, in itself, a sign of the writer's soul and intelligence. The sacred writings, with ever the same teaching, prove the continuity of the Spirit. Consider the aim of creation. Is it possible that all is created to evolve and develop through countless ages with this small goal in view? A few years of a man's life on earth. Is it not unthinkable that this should be the final aim of existence? The mineral evolves till it is absorbed in the life of the plant. The plant progresses till finally it loses its life in that of the animal. The animal, in its turn, forming part of the food of man, is absorbed into human life. Thus, man is shown to be the sum of all creation, the superior of all created beings, the goal to which countless ages of existence have progressed. At the best, man spends fourscore years and ten in this world. A short time, indeed. Does a man cease to exist when he leaves the body? If his life comes to an end, then all the previous evolution is useless. All has been for nothing. Can one imagine that creation has no greater aim than this? The soul is eternal, immortal. Materialists say, where is the soul? What is it? We cannot see it, neither can we touch it. This is how we must answer them. However much the mineral may progress, it cannot comprehend the vegetable world. Now that lack of comprehension does not prove the non-existence of the plant. To however great a degree the plant may have evolved, 
It is unable to understand the animal world. This ignorance is no proof that the animal does not exist. The animal, be he never so highly developed, cannot imagine the intelligence of man, neither can he realize the nature of his soul. But again, this does not prove that man is without intellect or without soul. It only demonstrates this, that one form of existence is incapable of comprehending a form superior to itself. This flower may be unconscious of such a being as man, but the fact of its ignorance does not prevent the existence of humanity. In the same way, if materialists do not believe in the existence of the soul, their unbelief does not prove that there is no such realm as the world of spirit. The very existence of man's intelligence proves his immortality. Moreover, darkness proves the presence of light, for without light there would be no shadow. Poverty proves the existence of riches, for without riches how could we measure poverty? Ignorance proves that knowledge exists, for without knowledge how could there be ignorance? Therefore, the idea of mortality presupposes the existence of immortality. For if there were no life eternal, there would be no way of measuring the life of this world. If the spirit were not immortal, how could the manifestations of God endure such terrible trials? Why did Christ Jesus suffer the fearful death on the cross? Why did Mohammed bear persecutions? Why did the Bab make the supreme sacrifice? And why did Baha'u'llah pass the years of his life in prison? Why should all this suffering have been, if not to prove the everlasting life of the Spirit? Christ suffered, he accepted all his trials because of the immortality of his Spirit. If a man reflects, he will understand the spiritual significance of the law of progress, how all moves from the inferior to the superior degree. It is only a man without intelligence who, after considering these things, can imagine that the great scheme of creation should suddenly cease to progress, that evolution should come to such an inadequate end. Materialists who reason in this way and contend that we are unable to see the world of spirit or to perceive the blessings of God are surely like the animals who have no understanding. Having eyes, they see not. Ears they have, but do not hear. And this lack of sight and hearing is a proof of nothing but their own inferiority, of whom we read in the Qur'an they are men who are blind and deaf to the Spirit. They do not use that great gift of God, the power of understanding, by which they might see with the eyes of the Spirit, hear with spiritual ears, and also comprehend with a divinely enlightened heart. The inability of the materialistic mind to grasp the idea of the life eternal is no proof of the non-existence of that life. The comprehension of that other life depends on our spiritual birth. My prayer for you is that your spiritual faculties and aspirations may daily increase and that you will never allow the material senses to veil from your eyes the glories of the heavenly illumination.